Hello guys, Flavien here. I'm the delicate buyer for ATL JDM in Japan. And we are with, uh, well, the latest custom order that we got and the lights are still on. It does look good for pictures, but I mean, those cars don't really have battery issues. <laughs> Pretty massive usually, but still. Uh, anyway, we are with uh, ATL JDM latest custom order. So this van, this van, this truck, this, I don't know how you guys call it, like Americans call this thing a truck. It's not a truck, it's an SUV. But uh, so this SUV is already sold and it is, uh, uh, I don't know, I was looking at the key to cheat for, to know the year, uh, because I forgot the year. I think it's a 1996 uh, Land Cruiser, Active Vacation, uh, 80 series, automatic, turbo diesel, with the 4.2 in line six. Uh, active Vacation, it might be the one thing that you do not know what is uh, in what I just said. You've got this, you're reminded right there that it is an Active Vacation. Uh, main thing is with the active vacation is i will just go over it right now Hop. oh yeah i forgot that it is a little bit annoying to open the door so keep in mind that these are factory options and you get a little kitchen Hop. Uh, you can fold the seat flat and sleep uh, in the back like this uh, so this is what uh, the original uh, factory option active vacation gets you basically little kitchen some storage board and and things like that but we'll we'll get back to that in, in a bit i'll leave it open anyway uh, let's go over the cosmetic condition first of uh, this active vacation 80 series land cruiser uh, so typical with japan when you have like a massive because this thing is really big i don't know if you can realize really the, the, the sheer size of that but for my japanese standard it's it's huge Typical, uh, some little scratches on the bumpers that can be easily just uh, sanded and repainted, and uh, it will probably be uh, sanded and repainted once it gets in the US. I think that the, the, the person who ordered it, I've been wanting one for for quite some time, and it did take us some time to find to find the right one. Uh, we went to check like a bunch of them, and always there was like little issues that uh, like prevented us from uh, from getting them. But uh, you can see some little scratches here. Uh, there's like more on the other side, but all of those are really, really minor. Also, the car, this one only has uh, something like 95,000 miles. Uh, so, for a 4.2 <laughs> turbo diesel, I guess, uh, yeah, it's barely out of, uh, out of the factory when it's like this kind of mileage. It can do like easily a million miles. Uh, those, those things are, are unkillable engine, engines, really bulletproof. Be it the engine, be it the turbo, being everything, um, be it everything, just really, really impressive. And one more scuff here. Again, thanks to Japanese streets that are slightly too narrow for, for most drivers. And uh, yeah, leaving a little bit, of, so a few scars, a few battle scars. Uh, from uh, keep in mind like those those vehicles here are really mainly driven in urban jungles and not <laughs> really off-roaded and uh, Yeah, that's definitely where those uh, those car those cars came from uh, Let's get back. So with uh, the rear You can see roof liner is in good condition like some stains a little bit, you know could be cleaned up But uh, but very minor with some speakers in the back right there uh, like the, the you can so you can fold all that see you have like the little table you can uh, uh, so I forgot a little bit how it works but uh, basically you can fold it and have some extra space uh, it is uh, bolted to the floor for this commode right there but everything here okay you do have extra storage space but you can also of course store whatever you need to store on top here uh, rear seat do fold flat we can just show you 
Okay. They will fall flat so you can put a mattress right there and just like uh, just sleep in the back basically. Okay. Little bit of uh, sign of use on the um, up on the shoulder rest right there on the armrest sorry and also these things are not being used often there you go up overall quite a lot of like space in the back just kind of expected considering how how huge <laughs> that car is by Japanese standards I do have bolster sits I'm not sure if you're allowed to do it there I can hear the motor working does it work let me check might have seen some things that ah yeah you have to move it so up yeah so it is manual so I'm not too sure what what this button does actually because it is definitely manual controls Oh, okay, that's a bolter seat. Ah, okay, so that's just solely for comfort right there. Here, it goes up, in and out, um, just like for, for the driver comfort. Uh, let's see, though, so we can just look a little bit, see a little bit of dirt. Could be cleaner there. We'll need like so just a wooden part polished. Uh, a few scratches here and there. A couple holes of stuff that was good on the dash. That can also be fixed, but... Uh, that will be done in the US and the altimeter with also control of the sunroof but what we want to hear if I can find the keys okay if I've lost the keys I am in trouble so they are not here huh Okay, I just looked at the keys at the beginning of the video, so they cannot be too far. Might have to pause until I find the keys. Here they are. Up. And we can look at the monster. Up. That are working perfectly, also not super common. And the engine. <laughs> very, very, very cool sound. Well, VIN is a chassis number, technically, VIN is for. Um, uh, American cars, that's how they call it, but the chassis number. Here, the timing belt was just done here in Japan uh, by us. So, it was done in 151,390 kilometers when it was done, and now it has 151,398 kilometers. So, yeah, just like seven kilometers on the timing belt. Uh, yeah, also all those shock, shock absorbers were, have been changed. They were in terrible condition. The whole thing was bouncy as hell. And even like the rust protection, the, the, rust pro the, the water protection cover of the shocks was actually rusty, which I've never really seen that. But it's pretty weird, especially the rest. Of the rest of the, of the SUV is actually just like clean as hell but those shock absorber not the best also uh, they have uh, controllable like um, like comfort adjustable like suspension thing you see you can put them in like sports mode normal mode you can hear the little beep when you do right there uh, this option is Japan only so if you want to replace the front shocks in the US, you have to order your shocks from here. Uh, it's rarely the case, but uh, for this one, yeah, no choice but to order them from Japan just because of uh, basically they're plugged. Uh, it's like you just stiffen the damp stiffen the shocks uh, whenever you you want to to drive maybe a bit uh, <laughs> a bit more sportly. 
which is uh, yeah not, not kidding of course and that thing is not exactly made to be sporty Up. Tac. here we go all right i guess we'll go with the gopro now oh, i can look into we didn't look much at the, at the interior before i go for a drive So you've got the four-wheel drive selection button right there, which uh, I'm not gonna test there because it turns on the diff lock and everything. So yeah, not uh, not something that you, you don't drive basically with this option, the diff lock uh, on uh, when you're on concrete because it does destroy it completely. It really forces on the whole thing and, uh, and bad, not good. I've turned off. Here you can select high and low gear. So right now you're on high gear. It is a full-time four-wheel drive one. You don't just you don't select it. So to select it, you see, if I'm like this now, I I can go back to neutral and I can. But I ah, no, it does work in park. Usually you have to put it in neutral and then do it. But it does also apparently work in park. Up. So yeah, and I'm not even gonna try uh, because when you turn it into low, it turns on the diff lock automatically. Up. So yeah it works like the, the transfer case are really bulletproof on those but uh up got the antenna going up and down so if you keep on it forces so don't do it and it's back down uh air conditioning is good radio works which is all we wanted to Speakers are not blown, that's a good thing. You've got a little couple there that really needs to be cleaned up. <laughs> I guess I didn't check that one before we took it. Uh, there is no traces of it being uh, smoked in, at least recently. Uh, so that's good and there's no smell also in the car, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, mirrors are electric, so I think that they work. No, electric, so there was something that did not work. That's a, that's a mirror. Mirrors are, ah, okay, this one can be controlled. Oh, just, uh, yeah. Basically, this is very old and needs to be waking up a little bit. So now it is working. And now it works also, just the button, yet like a little bit like, you know, hard to, but they do not retract though. Normally they would retract, uh, this one do not. Uh, all right, I guess now we can go for a little test drive. You want to see the sunroof open and close. Up. And let's get the GoPro on and go for a little drive. All right, let's go for a little drive. So we are on top of the Autobax parking lot. It's all the time a little bit scary to get in there with a tall car, because even though I do have quite a bit of margin to, to get into the, the parking lot itself, it just feels like really tight. Not necessarily here, but you will see that when we get to the next step, it's a little like <laughs> a lot lower. probably touch the, the top if I just were to open the, the sunroof and get my hand out. So yeah, the ride feels very, very comfortable now. Mostly because of the brand new suspensions. Not cheap suspensions for those things. I think they were like 
two grand total, which is not uh, not, not cheap for, for for Toyota suspensions. But they are like uh, yeah, electronically controlled, so can't help sadly. Uh, so the rarity. We are pretty lucky, honestly, that they still make the suspension because they have tendency to discontinue everything. Uh, a little bit too quickly, if I'm honest, when it comes to, to spare parts. acceleration not much is going to happen it is pretty torquey and it does feel like an absolute complete tank <laughs> and if I do the same thing with sport suspensions instead oh yeah so one thing that happens also uh, that would need to be adjusted the the spare wheel are definitely stiffer the the spare wheel um, the, the thing that slide like this uh, the connector is a little bit loose so it does if you accelerate quickly it, it does slightly open and it shows the warning sign that the, the rear gate is open so something to, to keep in mind uh, maybe to adjust like a little letter <laughs> I do like the, the, the feeling of, uh, of power that you get with those I'm gonna turn here that we get with those Land Cruiser it just feels like really feels like an unstoppable tank when you just like <laughs> start accelerating let me just close it's not again it's not open it just needs to be like see just pushing the up if you could see that light i'm not sure i'm checking but if you could see a red light just right there uh that was uh, the rear so, so just the spare wheel that just like moves slightly backward when you when you accelerate and it's enough to to show that uh, that sign right there to that basically says that uh, yeah it's open when it's not open it just needs to be pushed in but overall everything feels very solid uh, as expected with uh, with Land Cruiser, one thing to check, and this car is good. Uh, we've had before some issues with gearboxes. Uh, basically, what happened is everything is so heavy and so hard on on all the parts, which are beefed up and super heavy. It's like a combination. It's very hard, but it's also very solid, so it's fine. But uh, that the gearbox has tendencies uh, to to give some when it gets old. Uh, just uh, not uh, not smooth anymore especially on downshift you hear like a clunk when it downshifts and stuff like that uh, that usually mean a partial rebuild of the gearbox and that's a common issue with uh, 80 series uh, not at all the case with this one you can feel like it just like drives very smoothly uh, so not a problem at all with this but uh, maybe in 100,000 kilometer 150,000 kilometer, maybe going to be something that uh, you're going to want to look into. Uh, those problems tend to appear around like 300,000 kilometer, something like that. So fairly high mileage by uh, by Japanese standards, uh, but you will get new owner. I mean, if he daily drives it, uh, it's going to take him like seven, eight years to, to get there easily in the US. No, no problem at all. So like something to, to look for when you buy uh, when you buy those uh, definitely like gearbox issues ah, and I accelerated and the little warning light is back on keep in mind though the hatch is not open it just 
move slightly back like this and it's enough to, to throw the to get the warning sign out. And this thing feels great. <laughs> I really really like tank cruisers. Uh, my dream is to find a, a, a manual 80 series. It is so rare and so expensive. Like by all means, like this one, not cheap. Uh, but manual, like seriously, you like nearly probably close to double the price, really. Let's say like 1.5 at least uh, times more expensive. Uh, this is also not the biggest uh, diesel engine that you can get. I think there's like a 4.5 also that exists, which is also very rare. So imagine the combination if you have a 4.5 plus manual, uh, you're reaching stupid, stupid high prices <laughs> for, for them. These ones are expensive, but on the, the grand scale of things, uh, for anything coming out of Japan, it's still like pretty reasonable. Uh, Hilux also not cheap, not cheap at all, uh, but really competitive. Like those, like yeah, Land Cruiser 70s, 80s series, uh, 90s series, which are like uh, just recently legal, and 100 series, uh, which will be legal uh, fairly soon. All those are bound to like go quite high in prices, unfortunately. Not uh, not the greatest thing. I mean, you know, like yes, people think, "Ah, oh, it's more expensive." Like uh, you're making so much more money, like blaming the importer, blaming everybody, but it's just like costs so much more to, you know. It's definitely not in our advantage uh, for prices to go this high, uh, just because there's a lot less people in the US, it just like narrows the market, narrows down the market uh, for uh, of, of potential buyers. Because uh, when you tell them, I want like 40 grand, you want a nice thing further, yeah, 35, 40, 45 grand. Like people just like, wow, I used to buy those for like 20 grand. Yeah, you used to, but sadly, this is not 2015 anymore. And this is where we are at right now. Very sad, but it is how it is. And I'm not even, don't even get me started on actual like JDM cars, like, <laughs> like GTRs and, and other cars like this. Really enjoyable car to drive. Really, really enjoyable. Feels comfortable, sturdy. Feels like a mob of zombies could attack me right now. And yeah, I just plow through, you know, no issues. Maybe I'd get in low gear if you're a couple hundred, you know. Maybe. <laughs> but I'd be plowing through, no issues at all. Line Cruiser 80 series turbo diesel, the ultimate zombie apocalypse vehicle. Alright, well I guess there's not much else that I can add really. Um, yeah, if you have any questions feel free to contact Pars and ATL JDM uh, with your inquiries and till next time, which is very soon because I have more cars to test right now. Uh, 